All right, good morning, everyone. It's November the 6th, and uh, today's Bible verses or chapters are John chapters 13 through 16. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, our God, our King, we love you. We ask today for your mercy and your grace. We pray, Father, for your strength. As we study your word, Father, will, make, will you make it a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so four, four chapters today, a lot to cover. So uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 11, Jesus, it says, knowing all things. All right, so look at that. Uh, in verse 1, it says that he knew. In verse 3, he said, it says, knowing. And in verse 11, again, that he knew. So knowing that what was coming, knowing what was about to happen, he rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself to wash his disciples' feet. All right, and then right after that, in verses 12 through 17, Jesus teaches about serving and about humility, how it is that those that uh, love him and want to uh, draw close to him uh, will be serving other people uh, in humility. Verses 18 through 30, he, he foretells his betrayal uh, at the supper, and it says that uh, John, being the disciple whom he loved, leaned on his breast and asked him who it was, and Jesus indicated that it was Judas. Uh, verses 31 through 35, Jesus announces that his glorification is near. He gives a new commandment at that time. He says, therefore, love one another as I have loved you. Uh, Jesus was our example of a loving um, Savior. So we must love one another. As a matter of fact, in the book of James, in, in, uh, in 1 John, talks about the loving the brethren. Uh, all right, so verses 36 through 38, uh, Jesus foretells Peter's denial. Chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, Jesus is speaking about faith, believing in God, believing in Him, and that he tells his disciples that he is leaving, but he will return. Emphasis on will. He's going to return to take all believers with him. Verses 7 through 11, he declares that he and the Father are one. Verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, this is repeated in verses 21 and 23 and 24. So let me read 23 and 24 to you. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Jesus declares twice, or uh, four times here, that if we love him, we're going to keep his commandments. Now, how are we going to keep those if we don't know what they are? Studying the word of God shows us what he demands of us, what he desires of us, uh, the way that we are supposed to behave. All right. Uh, and then verse 19, uh, and going back a little bit to verse 19, Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. This is the promise of the resurrection. Jesus is foretelling ahead of time when he comes back, uh, we're going to have life. And because he is going to rise from the dead, then we also will arise from the dead. Uh, in chapter 15, verse uh, 1 through 10, nine times in the, those verses, Jesus says, abide in me. Uh, abide uses, he uses the word nine times. Abide means to dwell with, to make our home with, to, to live with him. And uh, in, in same verses, seven times he uses the phrase bear fruit. So abiding equals bearing fruit. When we live with the Lord Jesus or the Lord Jesus lives in us, then we are going to be about his business. We are going to be about uh, the, the ministry of the kingdom and we are going to be bearing fruit. When we obey the Father, then we will be bearing fruit. Verse 13, Jesus said, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Verses 18 through 25, Jesus explains, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. Now in chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, Jesus reminds his disciples and us that persecutions will come. Uh, in verses 5 through 15, Jesus says, But now I go away to him who sent me. Uh, and then he says, It is 
to your advantage that I go because he will send the Holy Spirit, him, the helper uh, to them and, and to us. In verse 13, he says that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. All right, verses 16 through 24, Jesus explains again that he's going away. In verse 22, he says, but I will see you again and your heart will, be, will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. When he returns from the, from the dead and appears to them, their joy is, um, is manifest there. And, and then after Jesus leaves them and ascends into heaven, they continue his work to the death. So praise the Lord that no one can take our joy, the joy of the resurrection. Verse 28, Jesus speaks plainly as he tells his disciples, I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. In verse 33, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right, so our, our thought for today, kind of a long one, so hang with me. We must choose whether we will or will not allow our hearts to be troubled. Uh, chapter 14, verses 1. Uh, Every disappointment offers an opportunity to overcome stress, fear, and depression, and to develop patience and faith in Him. Jesus said in verse chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Have a great day.